Now recall the concept of epsilon photography, something by now you should be familiar with because you did an assignment of trying to capture a sequence of pictures. Epsilon photography aims to capture a sequence of different pictures where basically we're changing one parameter by just a minute amount, very small epsilon amount, to capture the variations in a scene and then of course fuse the different pictures together to create a richer representation that captures the scene in a variety of conditions and that could be used to synthesize novel pictures, taking multiple captures of the single scene or the single image to generate a newer image. We looked at a variety of examples. We can actually change the exposure. If you recall, this was an example of what we did to create HDR images. So and by fusing the three different exposures of this image, we were able to generate an HDR image. Another example could be the viewpoint, right? where we change the camera parameters by changing the viewpoint and then fusing them together, we can create a panorama. Many other examples of this exist. Here is an example of being able to capture a focus stack and then being able to generate a new image that basically has no focus variations or, of course, sometimes we can then controllably change the variation. But in epsilon photography, the goal was to be able to capture all of those images and, in fact, actually capture multiple images then those multiple images could be then used to generate a newer image or perhaps even a controllable image that could be generated on the fly. Now remember our pipeline for computational photography. We want to capture a 3D scene which is illuminated, the optics focus the light uh, onto a sensor. We can process the images to generate a new output display for the user. If you recall this from our earlier lectures, basically this was kind of showcased in the following manner. We had a 3D scene. We can illuminate the scene with a computer-controlled projector, a controllable light source, and of course we can control the light source entirely or also the parts of it by creating some sort of a modular controllable aperture. Remember again, we have looked at this example uh, in the previous lecture when we talked about projector camera systems. Another option also was to create a camera, and of course we would know how to do cameras, we learned all there is to about the optics and the pinhole aspect of a camera, but we can also start thinking that now I can put some sort of a controllable aperture in front of this that not only controls the amount of light that goes in, but also which parts of the sensor would be lit based on which parts I either restrict or open. So that's the basic pipeline that we've looked at. We've looked at projector camera systems that have looked at how the illumination source with a camera can be used to extract and generate newer types of images. We have looked at the camera, but we haven't actually looked at how to control different aspects of it in this way, except in a few examples, like the dual photography example that we've looked at.